Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Birdie Consulting Group. To get more information about our coaching, publishing, executive ghostwriting, and podcast production services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Brody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Celine Anglet, author of Where Are You From? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Are you ready to get started? Absolutely. All right. Question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? I think if I had one piece of advice um, to give to a first-time author, I would say persevere. Uh, The publishing journey can be quite challenging, as we know, Um, but if you do it for the love of writing and you keep going, despite some of the rejections and adversity that are going to come along the way, then you'll find great joy in the process. Um, I think also, if I can add one point, is very important to surround yourself with the right people, so both personally and professionally as well. Absolutely. Having that support team is critical. Yeah. Well, what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? From my experience, the hardest part about getting published is actually what comes after. Um, So promoting and selling. Uh, The reason for that is that it's an ongoing process and it can really drain you and affect your confidence. But of course, it's absolutely necessary to be read and thus for your message to be heard. And then with your book, was it traditionally published or did you publish it yourself? Um, So I've got two books. Uh, The first one is called Where To Next and the second one is called Where Are You From? And both uh, are self-published. Well, and that's going to transition nice into our next question. Of course, we talked about marketing. So please share a marketing strategy that you have used in your book launch that worked well. So personally, I spent uh, about seven years in the corporate world before writing my books. And the way I looked at my book launch was like um, any other product or brand launch event. So I asked myself, like, who's my target audience? What are my key messages? Why would people attend and how can I make it stand out? So this way, when you, you know, when you look at a book launch this way, instead of just, okay, I'm launching my book and my book is the most important thing about it. Um, you're, you're moving away from that and it becomes more, um, about creating something bespoke, something unique, and hopefully something memorable for people. Um, so for example, the launch of my travel memoir, where to next, my first book was totally different to the kids friendly, fun packed arts and crafts event. I'm right now planning for the launch of my kids book. Where are you from? Um, I've actually written a a blog article about this topic, about um, how to make your book launch unique. Um, So feel free to check out my blog for more info. And are there any specific strategies that you recommend? You mentioned treating it like a brand, like essentially like a brand launch. So what are some specific strategies that you would recommend to our listeners? Specific strategies. um, Obviously, the first thing is find the right venue. Um, So you need a venue that will um, be linked to your book in some way, you know, represent what your story is about, what your message is about. Um, That's really important. Once you have the venue, it will dictate a lot of things afterwards uh, in terms of the book launch. So how much space, how many people you can invite. And then in terms of the marketing of it, just get it out there in as many ways as you can. Uh, I know that platforms are different in each country. Uh, in Australia, Eventbrite is is a really big tool in terms of promoting your event. I also used uh, that combined with Facebook and Meetup. So essentially just to try and spread the word to as many people as you can. Uh, I had only been in Australia for six months, so I didn't know that many people. But through all of this intensive marketing and talking about the book on social media every single day, I ended up getting 60 people to attend the event, which I was pretty happy about, um, considering that my biggest fear was to have no one in front of me (laughs) on the day. So if we're doing this local 
book launch. What, um, where did you actually have the venue at? Where, what venue did you end up choosing to have those that many people in there? Um, I ended up going for a cafe slash restaurant slash bar, uh, which is located just underneath the State Library of Victoria in Melbourne. Um, it's called the Moat Cafe. Um, and the reason why I chose it is because it had this really kind of liter- literary feel. And of course, the location next to the library is really symbolic. Um, and it's a kind of cozy environment, so, but it's big enough to host quite a few people and for them it's very interesting to have a book launch because you know it's a it's an event that they put on and they can get people through the door people buying drinks food etc on a day that is not necessarily their busiest day Um, so it's a it's a kind of win-win situation and if you find a venue that can have this arrangement with you then it's uh, it's much more beneficial than for example having it in a in a bookstore where they will take a percentage uh, of the sales of of your books um, at the uh, in the end so yeah yeah those are that's such great advice because the reason I wanted to ask you that was because my company we've actually done a similar thing with several of our strategic partners where we actually did a live event at a bistro here in the Arlington area where Friday mornings is one of their debtor days of the week. So we actually did an event in the morning and then another one in the afternoon and we used it as a partnership where they actually gave us the space at no charge. And then what they would do is they provided breakfast and they provided lunch to our different crowds and the people that attended all paid five dollars. So what we did was we gave him the five dollars per person, which I think we ended up having about two hundred and fifty dollars total. We gave that to him to cover the costs of the food for the breakfast and the lunch. And it was such a great system because it was a slower day of the week where they needed to bring in traffic and having these type of events is that perfect partnership as you mentioned. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, that's the key is um, you know, thinking outside the box. Um the first instinct is to say, okay, my book is a book. So where does bo- a book belong? It belongs in the library. It belongs in the bookstore, etc. But actually, the market is is so crowded that to stand out, you need to think outside that box. So my book, say my first book, oh, it's a travel memoir. It's about traveling. Uh, where does a travel memoir fit? Oh, hang on. I'm a French author. Oh, French author, French bakery. So now my book is sold in a French bakery and it, the, the bakery has sold more books than the bookstores that my book's in. They've sold 15 copies already. Um, the bookstore sold two in the last five months. So, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it's constantly looking outside of the traditional path into whatever opportunities could be out there. And you do make mistakes. I mean, make mistakes. You, you do try things that don't work, so many. So it's hard not to, I guess, feel a little exhausted sometimes, but you need to remember every single no leads you closer to the next yes. So just keep going. <laughs> well, you bring up great advice with your book about, um, about, a bake, about French food and being in a bakery. I mean, that's the perfect fit to actually approach a baker. Hey, this is what my book's about. I would love to have you sell copies here. It's such a great strategy to yeah. have that synergy. Yeah, and they uh, they really love it because, oh, they can have a new product. It's by a French author, so it makes sense to them. Um, and obviously, they take a, a small commission, but much smaller than a bookstore. Um, and uh, yeah, for them, it gives them something different, you know. And, and the good thing for the author is that you're the only book there. You know, it's not like a bookstore where someone will walk in and there will be so many books to choose from that it's hard for them to to pick one. And why would they go for yours if they haven't necessarily heard of you, if you're not very famous yet? Uh, Whereas in the bakery, my books are the only books. So, you know, people are waiting for their takeaway coffee or they're hanging out, you know, during the weekend just with their families. And then they turn around and like, oh, here's a kid's book. Why don't we have a look at it? And they read it to their kids. Then the kids are like, oh, I love it. I want it. I want it. And there you go. You have a sale. So, yeah, it's um, in the end. Like, I didn't expect it to work so well. But, yeah, it's it's been quite an interesting experiment. 
Well, it's just business one on one. It's just matching the brands together and running the book yes. like a business. And those are prime examples of exactly what you did. Yeah. I think that's a very important point. I actually gave a talk on that at a, a writer's conference recently about um, writing is a small business. I think that's the way, that's the reality. And I think that's the best way to see it. You're investing in your dream of writing a book. You're, if you, especially if you're self-publishing, but even if you've, if you're being traditionally published, your responsibility is to promote and sell the book at the end of the day. And in today's market is, is really changed. I think, I mean, a lot of people have told me that, you know, back in the day, da, 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 it wasn't like this, but it is now. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's all about how much you can promote and you can do and you can think of to, uh, to get your brand out there and, and your book out there so that your business then, you know, you make your investment back and hopefully a lot more. Yeah. And that's exactly the, the advice I give to my prospective clients. I always tell them you have to run your book like a business because you can, you can make good money on the front end with the royalties, but you make the life changing money on the back end with the offers, the services, the consulting, this public speaking, mm -hmm. those different things that you want to offer. And the book is the foundation of your platform to be able to do that as essentially the modern day business card. Mm. And what's really interesting, I think, is that it can go both ways. So you can, for example, get if, get gigs, uh, speaking gigs or workshops or all this kind of consulting business, etc., from your book. But you can also sell your book at speaking gigs that you do or, or events that you run or host or anything like that. So it's kind of like it, it, it feeds each other in a way. Um, I personally don't consider my books as, as a business card because they're not about, you know, they're, they're non, the first one is nonfiction, but, uh, it's a memoir. So it's really about experience rather than, uh, business. Yeah. Um, but still I can see how it feeds, it all feeds into each other. So any opportunity that you have to be out there is an opportunity to sell your book and your book, anyone that reads your book offers potentially a new opportunity for you to speak and do an event or do something. So yeah, it's, it's all connected and you need to constantly just look out for opportunities and, and ways that you can connect everything together. Absolutely. That first book is definitely the foundation. It's what you build after that. I'm right now I'm working on my 14th book. And as I was progressing with all these different books, I had specific books for publishing or for motivational speaking, where I was able to take that first book and just continue to build upon it. And that's one of the great things mm -hmm. about this journey is that you can actually do that and make it very specific down the line. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about your favorite book. So what is your favorite book? And what was the number one thing that you learned from it? Yeah, that's a really tough question because I have so many favorite books. Um, so it's hard to pick one, but I, I decided um, to go, I've decided to go with one that I've read recently. So it's called uh, The Art of Losing by emerging French author Alice Zenitier. Um, and it's a book that taught me a lot more uh, than I knew before about the Algerian War of Independence. And expressed in a in a better way than I ever could uh, the consequences of conflict and choices that come with it. And for a final question, what is your favorite quote and why? So my favorite quote is one um, that I is, is the one that I actually included at the beginning of my first book, uh, Where to Next. It's a quote by Anatole France uh, that goes. So there we go. All changes, even the most longed for, have their melancholy. For what we leave behind us is a part of ourselves. We must die to one life before we can enter another. And the reason why I love this quote um, is that I think it sums up really well the feelings that we have when we constantly move from one chapter of our lives into the next. And... So my brand is called Be Beyond Borders and what I write about in my books or on my blog is all about living abroad, um, traveling extensively, 
um, and the idea of a world without borders. And so this quote for me is really important because every time I've moved from country to country, you know, I've lived in France, Norway, the US, the UK, China, and now I live in Australia. And every time it does feel like I leave a little bit of myself behind and I kind of become another person. And there's great joy in that and excitement, but there's always a little bit of nostalgia as well. And when you look back and you think, oh, wow, that used to be me or that used to be my life and how life can just change like, like that from place to place is, uh, is quite mind blowing. Yeah, it's quite the journey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? Thank you so much for having me. So the best way for people to find me online is through my website, uh, www.bebeyondborders.com or also on Instagram and Facebook uh, at bebeyondborders. Well, thank you once again for being on the show and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how you can be featured in our brand new Get Published Business Book, go to getpublishedpodcast.com.